Yes, hi guys. Welcome to another session of our Stack and Kampala Basecamp. Yeah, so Stack and Kampala, well, our, our overall aim is to onboard many novice developers, software engineers to the StackNet ecosystem, getting them from a point where they don't know about blockchain, about StackNet, to a point where they can develop full fledged dApps on StackNet. So, this is another session of our, our base camp. And usually conduct our sessions from Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 p.m. East African time. Yeah, so in those who are with us in the last session, we looked, we unleashed StackNet and we had covered the fundamentals of StackNet. And today we are going to do a deep dive in StackNet. Yeah. Yeah. So we are still looking at the theory, theoretical bit of it. And after this session, we'll go into a practical, practical bit of stagnant working with Cairo. Yeah. So if I tell them to share something of what we covered in the previous session, our last session in the last minutes, we had something on the architecture of stagnant. Yeah. And this is, this is how, this is the architecture flow, yeah? So when a transaction, when a transaction is executed from a smart, from a wallet, remember as I said, every, every account contract is a smart wallet. Maybe it could be from a signer like your hardware, maybe a phone, maybe a machine. It goes to a sequencer. Now in the sequencer, this is where the ordering and execution execution takes place. Yeah? So the sequencer's main role is to order. Yeah. And then execute the transaction. The blocks. Yeah. And then as I said, in the main pool, transaction is validated. And then in the Cairo VM, a transaction is executed. But this is all in the sequence. Huh? Yeah. And then the trace of that transaction is sent to a prover. To the shared, it's a shared prover because it's being used by stack, other stack, the stackware and YDX. So from the prover, the valid proof is sent to the verifier on Ethereum. Yeah. And then that verifier sends the results in form of state difference to the L2, which is stuck. So basically that's it. That's that's a recap of the architecture. Just to go more in details on the transaction life cycle. Yeah, so transaction coming from a signer like a wallet, uh, a, a signer like a smartphone, a computer. That's why it's a signed transaction. Goes into the sequencer. Sequencer has a mempool which checks the correct transaction structure. Yeah. So if I know the, the, trans the transaction structure is is correct, it's in a received state. In case it's not correct, it's, it's ignored. Then that signed transaction is 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 taken down to the signature is taken down to the Cairo VM. Yeah, and then the Cairo VM checks. It, the state can <coughs> the valid transaction signature is then is one which is taken to the Cairo VM. Now that Cairo VM can 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 reject 
yeah, can reject and from the Cairo VM, the trace of the transaction is taken down to the prover, which is the shared prover. I said the shared prover is not only used by Stacking, but it's used for, uh, by other technologies like Stackware and Radiate. Yeah. And then the trace can either be accepted on the L2 or reverted. Yeah. It can be reverted in case maybe there are no enough gas fees. Yeah. And then when it's accepted, that's when it's taken. Accepted in L2. When it's accepted in L2, that's when it's taken to the prover. Now the prover sends the validity proof to the Ethereum verifier. Yeah. And the verifier is on which returns the, the state difference. In terms of the domes, and that's what is sent to the L2. Hope you're on the same page. So, Maria is having a question about um, a recap on the, on the architecture. Yes, I say the architecture as you see it clearly in the, in the slide. Yeah, the slide clearly shows the architecture of the, the transaction which is coming from a smartphone. Yeah, and then to the sequencer, yeah. as I say, the whole role of, role of the sequencer is to order these blocks and then to execute. And because that has the mempool and the Cairo VM, then the press from the Cairo VM. Which is compiled, compiled. The traces from the from the compiled transactions then sent to the shared prover. Shared prover sends it, sends the validity proof to to the Ethereum verifier, and the Ethereum verifier returns the result to us. Hope, hope I'm not clear. Yeah, so Sam is asking a question is Sam is asking a question what does it mean to be an L2? Why is that called an L2? Yeah, the main why it's it's an L2 is it's first as I said in our previous session that Ethereum is our L1. Yeah, but Ethereum, due to its robust nature of operation, it has issues with scalability. It has issues with slowness. Yeah, so there ought to be a solution to handle, and that's where Stacking comes in. Yeah, it's coming in to scale Ethereum. Yeah, that's why smart. That's why gas fees on stagnant and nearly close to attend yeah or the gas fees are to be paid on l1 or on on ethereum smart contracts on smart contracts using solidity yeah so stagnant poses as the perfect solution for speed yeah and scalability Yes, another one is having a question. Uh, Joe is having a question about the sequencer. Yeah, just one thing as a sequencer. Let me just open. So a sequencer is our, I won't share this link. You can go to book.stacknet.io. It clearly talks about the architecture and the sequencers. Yeah, let me just read for you something. The advent of layer two social like has entered the blockchain, improving scalability and efficiency. But what about transaction order? It is still managed by the base layer one. I'm reading from the book. book I'm reading from book to start it on IO. 
or is there an external system involved? Enter sequence. The sequence has ensure transactions are in the correct order regardless of whether they are managed by L1 or another system. Just a more about that. In essence, sequencing has two core tasks. Sequencing and execution. And executing, which is validation. First, it orders transactions. Determine the canonical sequence of blocks for a given chain for it then appends new blocks to this sequence as I explained. Yeah, after ordering the transaction, it determines the canonical sequence of the blocks, the right order for a given chain for then it appends new blocks to this sequence. Second, it takes just this transaction to updating the system state based on a given function. Just more about that to clarify, we see sequencing as the act. Of taking a group of unordered transactions and producing an ordered block. Yeah. So first you have unordered random transactions, maybe. Yeah. But we have to order them. So that we can get the correct state. And producing an ordered block. Sequencers also confirm the resulting state of the machine. However, so there, there is a, a, a good structure diagram on that. While some systems handle both ordering and state validations, we advocate for treating them as distinct steps. So you can go and check out book.stacknet.io and it clearly shows as well some of the sequences. There is Madara, yeah? And in case as well you want to verb to contribute to such so that you can get a grasp of, of how these sequences work. You can check out only that Madara's Madara supports contributors on only dust. And we have always shared about only dust. You can just go to I think it's only dust.com and check out Madara. And then maybe you can start contributing. Yeah. So just to continue. So transaction types. Yeah. So first a, a, a transaction. Is our stacknet code is declared on stacknet. So it means like it's it just as new code on stacknet. Yeah. So you can have new code, just imagine maybe there is a, a component you have implemented for maybe open Zeppelin, yeah? So you can create multiple instance, instances of this component which, is in, which you have imported, yeah? But, as they, but then you don't need to deploy all this, you may not deploy all these instances which have the same code, yeah? So first there's the declaration, yeah, and then on on deploying the invoke function is, is executed by the universal deployer. So the universal deployer uses this invoke function to deploy the smart contract. Yeah. And as well the, the deploy account. So deploy is an account contract, an account contract, an account contract. You get, the best way to understand is that it's coming from a smart wallet. Yeah. Yeah. So all transactions that modify the global state have to pay gas fees. Yeah. So remember in our session, which was handling the introduction to stacknet yeah i clearly sh shared some some snippet on the on the get method and the set the get and the set yeah so the get method doesn't modify the global state but the set yeah modifies it so you have to pay gas fees in the case, if you're using a smart wallet, it will be deducted by the sequencer from the smart wallet. Yeah? Calling a read-only function is not a transaction as it does not modify the global state. Yeah. 
a read only like the, the the get method yeah it doesn't modify in any way the global state so there there is in case you are from a web two background you can understand the the read only function like a get method in web two the most most common functions are post and get so you can understand the get methods similar to this one in 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 stackness smart contracts it doesn't modify it just gets the state of the data of the state of the blockchain sorry someone is asking about open zeppelin yeah so open zeppelin yeah so let me just you can just check it out just open here something let me share it in the link open zeppelin so you have shared the link I just want to share something small about it. So open Zeppelin, that is openzeppelin.com. I've shared the link in the chat. Open Zeppelin contract helps you minimize risk by using battle tested libraries of smart contracts for Ethereum and other blockchains. It includes the most used implementations of ERC standards. Yeah. So you may maybe in your smart contract you need to impose things like ownership yeah you may find some components yeah or modules yeah which we are already developed and you don't need to 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 redevelop this same thing yeah uh, in case you are from a web 2 background and you have ever written any python code there are such cases where you need you import classes. Maybe you've imported the uh, you have imported some packages and maybe some modules. Maybe for example, at the moment we used to import the OS module, the system module. Yeah. So that's just understand that in the similar way to open the yeah. I hope I've answered you correctly. Hope you you understood something from my explanation. Let's look at the counterfactual deployment, yeah? So first, as I said, create a smart wallet, smart wallet using platforms like uh, Bravos, Agentex, yeah? As smart wallet, it, you, it, it, it has an account contract, yeah? So you deploy the when you deploy the account contract you pay gas fees and the gas fees is deducted by the sequencer from the smart wallet but then there is this case i can decide to deploy an account contract how do i deploy an account contract? if i do i don't have an account contract to pay gas fees so i must that always i must use my smart wallet to pay the gas fees yeah yeah you can create a, you can create an address yeah of chain yeah and then you prefund for example in case I, I i have created my address i can just go to faucet stacknet faucet dot 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 faucet stacknet faucet dot vessel dot app and then i prefund it yeah that's in case um maybe it's um i'm working on a test mode. yeah but you can still prefund your address yeah and then after sending funds that you deploy the account contract using the deploy account transaction yeah then the, the sequencer the dust gas fees from the address. So it's not only limited to that. You can decide, it's not that I always have to have maybe Bravos or Agent X, yeah? As long as my address 
my created address is is prefunded. Yeah, the sequence I will just deduct in case I've deployed the account contract. Yeah, using of course the deploy account transaction, using the of course using the deploy account function. It will deduct the gas fees from the address, this address which was already prefunded. Yeah. Oh, um, someone is asking. Sam is asking a question about. Smart wallet. Yeah, smart wallet. Yeah. I remember in the previous session we had a session where we are handling creation. Uh, we we handled creating our smart wallets, and I said you can use Bravos or Agent X, and even I indicated on how to to fund to fund your smart wallets with testnet with faucets, darknet faucet to press on the app. Let's proceed. So in summary. Summer of transactions, you, de you can declare, invoke, and then you can deploy in the universal deployer. It uses the invoke function. This deploy this account contract from the smart wallet. And then the, tra the transaction life cycle is that, as I explained it, transaction is received accepted on the l2 and after which is accepted on l1 and can as well be rejected or reverted let's proceed i want to talk some about data availability yeah so as i said stacknet is built on ethereum yeah Stacknet is built on Ethereum, and Stacknet is an L2, which scales Ethereum. Yeah, but it 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 uses uh, it uses Ethereum as the data availability layer. Yeah, let's just go in details. So. The transaction is executed. Maybe you've written your smart your smart contract on Stacknet. Transaction is sent to the sequencer. Yeah, in form of a block. Now this block in the main pool there is ordering. Yeah. And then the validity. In the main pool, there is ordering and then there is execution. Yeah, I shared prior done. And this transaction is compiled by the Cairo VM. And the traces, yeah, this transaction from the Cairo VM are sent down to the prover, which is a shared prover because it's not only used by StackNet but as well as technologies like Stackware, YDX. Yeah, then the validity proof from the prover is sent down to the Ethereum verifier. Yeah, now the Ethereum verifier returns this valid proof, returns the state difference in terms of blobs. Yeah. We can understand blobs as I remember I shared something in when we're, when we're covering Rust, I shared something about the heap data. Yeah. So the heap data is unstructured. Yeah. And the heap data is stored for a short time in the memory. So after some time it's removed so these blobs are not stored as blocks actual blocks yeah 
you can go and read about blobs, but blobs are not just like data. These blobs are, we can understand them as, they're not actual blocks, but we can understand them as uh, temporary storage data structures. Yeah, which are returned yeah, by the Ethereum verifier to tell the state, the, the state, the new state, yeah, to our L tools. And this is the advantage, yeah, because in case, in case after the, after the verification on Ethereum, yeah, in case it's returned as actual transactions, those would be consuming a lot of space. But they are instead returned as blobs. Yeah, and these blobs after 30 days, one month, they are, they are destructured on the Ethereum, on the EVM. Yeah, so you can, you can they have a lifespan of 30 days hope hope i'm very clear maria is still asking a little more explanation about blobs okay thank you maria let me let me get a better explanation As I said, you can man your book to stacknet dot i dot i o. Instead, so just a small explanation. Reducing data available cost on stacknet. Yeah. So instead of using EIP four eight four four proposes a change in how data availability information is sent to layer one. Instead of using cold data. The information will be called data is uh, in case you've worked with um, uh, Python, yeah, maybe your your function was taking in some arguments, yeah. So those arguments are what is called called data. The information will be sent as blobs. This mechanism expected to be cheaper than the current method used by Cycle for posting data to Ethereum. Consequently, it would make layer two transactions more affordable. An notable downside of this approach is the limited lifespan of blob data. As I said, the lifespan is 30, 30 days. Once posted to Ethereum, this data will only be available for one month before being pruned by layer one nodes. Stacknet's adoption of this feature depends on its implementation. The Ethereum mainnet is anticipated to be in, incorporated into Stacknet by mid 2024, following its activation on Ethereum. Yeah. So hope you you can check out book with Stacknet on I in case I haven't clearly expounded it. I've shared the link of book of stacknet.io. Just to understand the recreating L2 state from L1. Yeah, so in case my Genesis block is empty, of course, it's empty. Yeah. And then um, the new blocks which are created the B1 and then the B2 are the Genesis block B1 and then the B2. So, because there was no previous B1 and B2, we only had one Genesis, we had one, we had one main block which was empty. So the state difference can be, is calculated, but in this case, it was empty. So, and then this state difference is sent to the layer one. Yeah, so then in case <coughs> after that, 
as well have new blocks b3 b4 b5 yeah so state diff one and state diff two the difference shall be calculated yeah and then here we can clearly see because in the state diff one we had g b1 and then b2 and in state diff two we have b3 b4 b5 so a new state shall be returned in comparison to the previous state yeah yeah so and just to summarize the empty plus the state diff one plus state diff two gets us the l2 state so that's how we can recreate l2 state from layer one hope um clear we need to understand the blockchain as I see Jose is asking about what are these blocks? What are blocks in the blockchain? So so in the blockchain, understand it by when I'm building a house, every new brick is added on top of another yeah so understand a transaction every transaction in the blockchain as a new block which is being added in the blockchain yeah and every time that new block is being added it's affecting the state of the blockchain that's a lay man understand uh, explanation i can give hope you've gotten it yeah, sure thank you so Let's have a look at this. Yeah. So let's take this sample simple case. In case Joe is sending one ETH to Jen. And then Jen is sending 0 0.5 ETH to Jen. Yeah. So the new state will be Joe negative one ETH. Because Jen, Joe negative one if, because Joe sent the one if initially, then join Jen, Jen, the new state as well, Jen has 0 0.5 if, and then Jim has an increment of 0 0.5 if as well. Then another case scenario Joe decides to send one if to Jen, Jen sends two if to Joe. And Joe sends 0 0.5 is to Jen. So you realize that we have many, we have more transactions as compared in the first case. But just check out our, how, what our new state will be. So Joe will have 0 0.5 is, and Jen will have negative 0 0.5 is. Yeah? So, you realize that we have many transactions, but the new state, in compared to the first case, yeah. So, this is why the power of the validated validated rollups like like stacking, because for opt optimi optimistic rollups, yeah, like optimism, they have to return every transaction detail. But for ID rollups, we don't need to, we just need to get the new state, the current state. And then we can have a case whereby, so Jen in this case, just to, let me just make more meaning about this, sorry. Let's make a small adjustment. So, I added, added. So, in another scenario, in case Jane decides to send one if to, to Jim,
and then Jim as well sends back that one is yeah so realize there is no state difference what was sent yeah so it's like what Jen sent again Jim what Jen sent to Jim Jim sent back to Jen so you re we don't need to to we just need to find the state then the current state we don't need to return the details all the details of the transaction that happened we just need to get the we just need to get the current state as per now hope i'm clear with that so as i said you can we are using book.stacknet.io as our manual for the best camp yeah and yeah so this is how data availability costs are being reduced sending data available data to l1 as blobs that's what stack is doing and that's why it's cheaper so temporary storage as i said blobs are stored for one month the one month they are destruct destructed on the Ethereum layer because it's a data available layer, availability layer. So it's cheaper than cold data. Yeah, so you don't need to return the cold data. You just need to return the, the new state. Yeah. Just imagine you have to return all this data. Maybe a transaction has taken place and it has it has consumed maybe 20 MB. But mystic rollups they have to return all those set MBs of data. But here I only need to find the new state. Yeah. So that means I don't need to because in case I'm in case of missed rollups, it the, the, the data has to be returned and then it's consuming space. Yeah. On 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 the on the blockchain. But here, I just need to return only the new state, the current state, the state difference actually. How the old state is different from the new state. So, one other advantage, ad, ad, advancement which is coming to stack it is the volition. So, it's option to store data, available data off chain, a transaction. Off chain data availability is cheaper than blood. Yeah, and then we shall, as part of the best camp, we shall look at at Dojo. Yeah, which is used to build on-chain games. These are on-chain games. There is like sample on-chain game, so we can check it out. And as well, you can as well contribute to Dojo on only Dust. Case one two. Yeah, so Dojo, so game engine and tools for building on chain games and auto autonomous. Yeah. So you can check out Dojo dot engine. Or so at the moment stacknet is the cheapest l2 yeah according to growpy.com you can check out growpy.com i shared the link this this is the very link You can check it out. Yeah, Grow pilot. It's 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 it acquaints you with comparison. Let me just open it here.
the strength of the mage. Yeah, it's actually grow pi dot x y z not grow pi not grow pi dot com yeah so it will give you you can find the transaction costs and you can compare starknet with other l2s yeah you will find out that Starknet is, is way, way more cheaper compared to others. Yeah. You can just open it and check it out. So, another concept here, why is the state difference an output of the prover? Yeah, so why is it that from the prover, after the verification, from the validity proof, yeah, we get the, the we need, why is it, my, I beg your pardon, from the prover, why is the state difference an output? Let me just, before I go, let me just go to the architecture. So from the sequencer to the mem, the sequencer which has the mempool, the VM. So these blocks, yeah, which are abandoned, are taken to a stagnant OS. So the stagnant OS is an intermediary, intermediary, between Cairo VM and the prover, yeah. So the compiled blocks are taken, bundled down to the Starknet OS, and then the trace to the Starknet OS is taken to the prover, yeah. To a shared prover, a shared prover is as well a blockchain writer, yeah. So just to go back, so the Starknet OS we have seen is between the Cairo VM after the compilation of the transaction and then the, the prover. So the trace is what is taken. So the Starknet OS is between there. Yeah. And the Starknet OS that takes the current states. Yeah. As an input, you can. You can understand it that the current OS to find out the state difference has to take the current state, the new blocks being added, and then the codes, the 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 hashes of the the declared transactions, which is the code, and then the compiled code form of comp in form of the hashes. Yeah. Because we are storing the hashes and not storing the code. And then it returns us the state difference. Uh, yeah, the state difference basing on the old state and now the new state. And then the clash has hashes, hashes of the code, and then the compiled class hashes. Now that after compiling the code. So you can understand the Starknet OS as that. And in case you want to find more about the Starknet OS, okay, let me just share the link in the chat. And as well, one thing I, I just is to try as much as possible to 
want to run yeah in case you don't feel you, you you need to understand it more you can just check it out yeah so there's some the stacking always is a kind of program run by the shared prover to prove stacking is the transition yes that means that stacking itself is written in Cairo the shared prover doesn't know anything about stacking yeah and I say all it takes as an input a base 64 encoded Cairo program independent execution files which are yielded by the Cairo runner. I'm reading this from hackmd.io. The program hash of the StackNet OS is registered on the StackNet core contract, which prevents one to prove a state transition with a different version of the OS. Yeah. So you can check out, try to do some some research about this thing we're talking about. Let's try and summarize this. So data variability modes, we have the rollups, the L2s that use Ethereum for data availability. So I feel like stacking is a rollup. So they have better liveness, but when yeah, yeah. Stacking is a rollup. Now the validians, yeah. L2s that don't use the theorem for better availability. You can check out Celestia. You can check it out. Celestia. Let's say Celestia.org. I'll share the link in the chat. So let's say is on the index page it says Celestia is the first. The first modular blockchain network, such as a modular data available network, that makes it easy for anyone to actually launch their own blockchain. So build whatever, deploy first launch a blockchain using Ethereum, no love frameworks, or transform your NFVM into your own sovereign chain. The Celestia underneath, a customizable blockchain becomes as easy to deploy. So you can check it out, but Celestia is a good, Is a good case study on on validium. So stack X as well is a validium. And then volition, we talked about volition, just to remind you. So this is a hybrid data availability model up for by for plus validium. User able to choose where to store data. So user can either choose to store data off chain or on chain. Uh, it's coming soon to stagnant. So in summary of about that of availability prevents stagnant from getting stuck. Yeah. Stagnant sends state differences, class hashes and compiled class hashes as data availability. These are outputs of the stagnant OS program as we saw here. Data availability, DA data, because we're using Ethereum as a data availability layer. Yeah. So DA data is posted to Ethereum using blobs, and said blobs are destructed on the Ethereum layer after one month. Yeah. And we saw the advantages. Using blobs versus, so if in case you don't use the blobs, you're not optimistic. Rollups have to use cold data, yeah, but it consumes space yeah, on the blockchain. So stacking is the cheapest L2. At a subsent transaction, you find that spend subsense 
so cheap in terms of gas fees. So with the advancement of things like pollution, even become cheaper. And to help us, probably we are going to have a lot of products such as games built, on-chain games built on stacking. Yeah, so that's the end of our session, our deep diving stacking. Yeah, but I urge us to check out book stacknet.io and just to go just to equip ourselves more with this and you can as well check out celestia you're not stopped from exploring you can enrich your knowledge yeah and then as i said you can check out open zeppelin and then for contribution to grow your knowledge as a blockchain engineer or developer, you can start contributing on only dust. Yeah, there are very many, and you, are, you when you contribute, are you actually paid money? It's not free. Yeah, when you contribute, you are paid money, but in this, you get to learn, you grow your portfolio as as a blockchain dev, you learn a lot. You learn, a, there are very many Web3 projects there. So that's it from me. Thank you so much. Let's meet again on Wednesday, 8 p.m. East Africa time. So you can as well share your feedback. Um, let me share a, won't share a form. You can as well share your feedback on how and what improvements you want in our base camp. And thank you for being on time. So let's meet again on Wednesday, 8 p.m. East Africa time.